You've been a good boy. Such a good boy you are. This is a very personal story. It's about a much-loved cat called Mr Skittles, who started life as a stray until vet nurse Liz Puglisi decided to adopt him. Like most kittens, he was cute and fluffy, but he also came with a smorgasbord of health issues, including an abscess, cat flu, and, over time, developed some serious bladder problems, costing Liz and her family plenty, despite working as a vet nurse. Now, Mr Skittles has one more hurdle to cross. Mr Skittles got sent over to us by Jenny and Liz over at Newbridge Animal Centre. Mr Skittles is owned by one of the nurses that works here, Liz, that she also works over there. And he was becoming really lame on his right hind limb a couple of months ago. They took x-rays then, they didn't really see anything. He got much better with anti-arthritic medications. So arthritis is actually pretty common in cats, older cats, but it got much worse in the last couple of weeks. So one of the first things we actually do when a dog or cat is lame in one leg is when we go to x-ray them, we actually x-ray the normal leg as well. So this one is actually an x-ray of Mr. Skittle's normal left leg. I just want you to have a look at this area here because it's got normal bone and normal cortex. And this is his sore leg. So if you look here, the bone is more fuzzy. He's got sort of these fuzzy edges to it. And if you follow this cortex down, it doesn't make a line all the way and there's actually a break in this area here. And that's called a pathologic fracture. And that's what's causing Mr. Skittle's pain. So at this point in time, even for pain relief, we would recommend amputation because bone pain is incredibly difficult to control, both in people as well as in animals. The ARH specialists want to double check the earlier x-rays against their own to know exactly what it is they'll be doing. So maybe Mr. Skittle's cancer actually started in his lungs and went to his leg. And then his leg is actually the first clinical sign we've seen in him. So that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon. So what, when Mr. Skittles Now normally this is a fairly right. routine procedure, but today it's very personal. The team discussed the options, including euthanasia. It's a tough call for Liz. After all, Mr. Skittles is her baby. But it's the best decision. Once the go-ahead is given, Mr. Skittles is prepared for his operation with vet nurse Casey clearing the area to be operated on. The big trick is not to leave yourself too short for skin. And you're going to make two incisions, curving down the thigh and back up to a point. A few basic principles with amputation. If you're taking a, a leg off because of a tumour, you ideally take the whole bone rather than sort of cut a, a bone high up away from a tumour. The bone, uh, our tumour's down in the tibia, so that's not an issue. We're going to take the draining lymph node that is enlarged in the process. Generally, you want to be taking nerves higher up and, and blood vessels lower down, but usually there's a fairly obvious place where you do it. We like to block all of the big nerves with marcaine. Sometimes we'll use a regional anaesthetic like a, an epidural. With this one we're going to directly inject into the big nerves we come across with a long-acting local anaesthetic. It'll give us probably a good eight hours. We usually don't cut the bone at this stage. It's one of the last things we do, but we're going to be aiming to cut the bone fairly high up. We could take the hip, sort of disarticulate the hip, but you find that that's a little bit more work in terms of there's more bleeders, I don't know that there's a huge advantage. Generally we're going to be taking a lot of the weight of the leg. If we're not likely to use a prosthesis, and prostheses are a bit topical, there's probably will be some situations where a prosthesis might be worth thinking about, but on the whole, because they're getting around pretty well, we don't worry about it. The prosthesis in humans, you'd try to leave as much of the leg on as you could for the, the possible application of a prosthesis. in dogs and cats generally, you do. I think you're better off to lighten the load rather than leave a, a big stump because generally they're not going to be terribly useful. Can you just put a bit of pressure on there? And do the same with the biceps to lower it down. It's a bit, if you can cut a muscle close to its insertion you'll find there's less 
bleeding sometimes is here, we're sort of cutting across more of a muscle belly. But if you can cut close to the tendon, there's less sort of ooze and seroma formation. Seromas after surgery are one of the more common, not disastrous, but probably more common complications we see. Let's just hold that up there. So big vessels, big arteries, like if you're doing a renal artery or a big dog's regular yeah. artery, you tend to use a non-absorbable okay. suture for the arteries. So sort of strip that off there. Okay. So here's our sciatic nerve. There. It's the biggest nerve to the back leg, the most important, along with the femoral nerve at the front. Okay, so we're going to transect this pretty high up behind the hip there. But before we do that, we're going to put in some local anaesthetic and put in a decent sort of blurb of local anaesthetic right into the nerve. This is the one we cut and leave with the leg, yep. so it's just going around everything. Yeah. Generally, for bigger arteries and veins, it's not a bad habit to, to get in the habit of doing them separately. There's this theoretical risk that if you ligate a big artery next to a big vein, they can sort of join up and form a, an arterial venous fistula. It's sort of theoretical, sort of in, as a risk, but it's not a very common thing. Usually, just as you're getting to the point where you think it's all all done and dusted, you hit the one vessel you haven't ligated and it spurts, spurts royally, but that's still part of this system here. There might be a branch down in here. Let's have a look. Alright, so now we've gone around it. Can you just hold that up there? I don't really want to touch the lymph node too much. Hmm? It's in there. Mm. You don't need to go looking for it, is what I'm saying. We still have this decent branch here, and there's probably still a decent arterial component in that. Is that close to our luggage? I think we might just. Put another one around there for good measure. Before we cut that. You might have to help me as well get the sample out afterwards. I don't really know how to cut up the bone. I'm going to go pretty high, close to the hip, but. There's less muscular dissection if we leave the very proximal femur intact. Personal preference really is no, they both cut bone in the same sort of way, it's just this one's more like a pen and this is more like a pistol grip. Makes you feel. Do you like spraying whilst? No. Well, see how it goes. If it starts to smoke, we need to spray it, but it. Yeah, okay, a little bit. Uh, we might have one officer going in there, but that's our sample. We will. All right, so so basically you're going to join the muscles at the back to the muscles at the front and the muscles on the side to the muscles on the, ins on the outside to the muscles on the inside. 
whichever order you do that doesn't seem to make a lot of difference in the end we're going to have this little stump which is certainly not bleeding too much let's see let's rotate it around there that's the, the cut edge we're going to cover it over generally better to use the the fascia if you can than the the muscle it's always a bit more skin on one side than the other so you just got to space it a little bit so you you might end up with a bit of wrinkle to the wound at the end, but it usually sorts itself out as it heals. So you're going to tend to have more skin on this side than that side. Yeah. We can deal with that at the end if we run out, if we needed to, we can create a, a bit of a twist to that. Or usually I just wait and see, because if you go a little bit further ahead on this side and a bit slower on this side, you can still get it to sort of match up all right so that you're not too worried by the time you're done. Typically this cat would be in for at least tonight and probably tomorrow night. First 24 hours would stay on opiates, either a continuous rate infusion or intermittent bolus injections. On top of the local anaesthetic that we're going to use, we, we have used and we'll probably put the rest of that in. If it's bright and happy and eating well, it depends a little bit on the owner. Now this owner's a vet nurse and she may well sort of take the cat home sooner than somebody coming from a long way away. If we've got people coming from Canberra, or out of town, we'll often keep them in a little day extra because there's nothing worse than them driving all the way back home and discovering a problem when they're sort of three hours away and having to turn around and come back if we want to look after it. As soon as the cat is bright eating and is off opiates, it could go home. All right, let's have a quick look at that bone over there. Should we cut that up? That's tumor. Uh, it's oh. into the, the joint there. We've got multiple joints. Up there. And did you see how it That's going to be the, ch the tumor tissue there. And you it can also sort of see it. Looked like it was crossing into the joint a bit, didn't it? Yeah. Especially, did you see the x rays of today? Mm hmm. So that's sort of the tibiotarsal joint, the main joint there, and this is tumour tissue sort of crossing across the joint capsule on either side of it. The whole procedure with specialist surgeon Dr David Simpson takes around an hour and a half. Finally, Mr Skittles is slowly brought out of his anaesthetic. Loaded up with pain relief, he's totally unaware of what's happened to him. He'll recover over the next 24 hours with plenty of TLC from all of the vet nurses at ARH. And amazingly, within just a few days, Mr Skittles can go back home. In a week, he's moving around almost as if nothing has happened. The best part, of course, this time he's in no pain whatsoever and learning to walk a different walk. But the biggest reason for telling you the Mr Skittles story is that for animals, an amputation of a limb can not only save their lives, relieve their pain, but they cope so much better than we humans do. As you can see, Mr Skittles is doing just fine.